Yo, it is your boy Jack here talking about Big Brother 19. More specifically, I'm talking about Jason's HOH reign, which caused Matt and Raven to be put on the block and Matt being evicted because Jason didn't use a veto because he never promised it. Um, more specifically, though, I'm going to be talking about Matt getting evicted and how happy I am that a floater is out of the house and how he didn't do anything by besides eating cereal and it's going to be a huge rant. Um, so thank you so much for sticking around for these first 30 seconds. Uh, hopefully you'll stick by for the rest of the video. Also, by the way, if you like my shirt, please let me know down in the comments or hit up the like button um, to let me know if you like my shirt and if, uh, if you like any other shirts in my other videos, let me know. So, yeah. Here we go. So Jason was HOH. Um... Alex wanted to put up Kevin, and really, Kevin's just Kevin. Like, you know what, It's it, you're just stupid, honestly. You should have gone for that HOH, Alex, and got, put up Kevin yourself. You shouldn't have, Like, everybody knows you want Kevin out. That's it. And even Kevin knows that. And it's like, really, you're going to try to manipulate, manipulate Jason to get his, like, second right-hand man to go up on the block? Like, it's sort of pointless. Like, if you're going to make a move, and you want to make a move like that, then make it yourself. You you have the opportunity to do to, to be HOH. Why didn't you? Why didn't you turn on um, him and everything? And it's like, you didn't. So congrats. You wasted your opportunity to do that. And, like, you can't manipulate Jason. Especially to put up Kevin. Like, it's not going to work. Um, moving forward, the nominees are Matt and Raven, and I am honestly so happy that Matt's on the block, um, not just as a pawn, but as a serious nominee, because really at this point, Matt is a huge floater, and I don't want him to win because I don't feel like he's done anything in the game, he has been the biggest flop of this season, um, and I'm sad about that, like, like I, I just, I want him out of the house because all he's done is eat cereal and have a shower, and for me as a super fan, I understand that we need to have a, um, a good amount of um, casual fans and people that don't know the game because really there's a high possibility of them doing the doing well in the game but for someone like Matt it's like that's like the one example that I'll use is like okay well why why have no have someone who doesn't know this game um, and it's just like that's the one thing I don't like about Matt is like Bro, like you've never seen this game. You have no, you have no drive to learn about this game, and it was just, it was so annoying. I'm so happy he's out of this house because really, like as a super fan, this is an opportunity of a lifetime. You have it's, um, it's so hard to get into this house that you're wasting this opportunity clearly, and it's just offensive to me. I don't know. I just found that really offensive because it's like dude you have this once in a lifetime opportunity use it and you're not you're not using this once in a lifetime opportunity um moving forward though at least raven's entertaining having um i'm not gonna hit her though when it comes to raven about her gastroparesis and everything because obviously that is a serious medical issue that's the one thing i'll say i like about raven is she's brought in light onto this issue which is obviously a very serious um uh, disease, um, and it's so great to hear a lot, bunch of other people's stories about this and how how it's affected them. So it gives me a lot more of a clearer view of how this disease works, um, further than um, what um, Ravens has said on the feet um, and everything. Um, but yeah, it's um, Raven. Um, I think she's entertaining though. I love her. Um, <laughs> I love her rant. I love her like her evolution of an accent over the th like over the seventy days that she's been here, where it's gone from like a personal like accent like this, where it's just no country accent at all, to day seventy, where it's like, "Hi y'all, my name is Raven. I am Raven, doing Raven stuff." I I find that just hilarious how much of an attention seeker she is because. Um, for me, I don't look at her as a game player or a strategic player. I look at her as a character from Big Brother UK, um, because obviously that season's different, where you vote more about, like, it's more focuses on a character of a person or a personality of a person, 
which is honestly honestly the only way I can look at her because it just I, I do get offended strategically, but I do like her as a character um, just because she's hilarious. I, I she's the one character where I have laughed a lot about all of her moments throughout this whole season. Um, so yeah, I also love the hashtag Raven Exposed party on Twitter. It it makes my heart warm. It makes it hilarious. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, yeah. Um, I love how the house guests have gotten into it and everything, and it's just been a part of this season. That's the one thing I'll say about Raven. She has been a point of laughter for me. Jason won veto. Obviously, he promised, uh, he promised Matt and Raven um, to use the veto, but he didn't, and I don't really care. I love the fight that came out with that, where, like, Matt was calling, uh, <laughs> Was was say a punk B and like, uh, like he was like yelling at um, Jason for like you've been in the tr the storage room for twenty minutes. It's like you've been in this house for seventy days and haven't done anything. It's like you have no right to yell at him because he decided being H O H being the person who nominated you not to use the veto that he went on his own. It's it just Matt. It's just Matt. Matt. Mm. Um, I sort of hope that if Paul does make it to the final, someone like Matt screws up the vote, um, and Davon's it. No offense, Davon, you're awesome, you're amazing, and I know you didn't intentionally screw that up last season, but I'm so happy, I'd love to see him get Davon'd again by Matt, which I would die for. Um... Just because that would just be ironic, the guy who's floated throughout the whole season screws up the one vote um moving forward we have the hoh for next week leading into a double eviction number two uh people leaving the house uh on thursday I'm so happy about that um but the hoh is christmas making the big moves that she did last week i'm using quote or uh, the two weeks ago i'm using quotation marks to emphasize that she didn't do anything really that big besides the fact of getting mark for uh, getting paul further in the game and mark out of the house <sighs> she's gonna make a big move again when i say big move she's gonna do nothing really to sustain her game and sustain paul's further um you know what though like it's not bad like obviously a if she was the smartest person in the house right now, she would try to get Paul out and not tell Paul and backdoor him as a pawn um, and convince everybody to get him out. Obviously, that will never happen because Paul is in everybody's ear and Paul, the only, um, there is no bad game move for Paul at this point. He's developed such a great social structure with all these people in the house that really getting him out of the house is impossible. Uh, he is like a cockroach um, because you don't kill the cockroach. Uh, Christmas will most likely flop this HOH. Um, once again, like she did, because she she's going to be making big moves like nominating Alex and Jason when she should be nominating Paul and someone else. Um, maybe Paul and Kevin. That would be an interesting combo, wouldn't it be? But yeah. So going into a double eviction... This is the one chance, the one opportunity that we as fans can get rejoiced because Paul could actually get out of the house. Because honestly and truthfully, there is so much unpredictability in this moment, in the game, during a double eviction where everything happens and only a week happens in an hour um, or however long it is in house time. Um, so much happens in such a short amount of time that there is... Uh, a split decision can happen so quickly. Obviously, that is a one. Um, that's the one way that we can get Paul out of the house, and I would personally love that. I would be living for it because it, it would be like the Nana moment from Big Brother Canada Five. I'm going to keep on mentioning that because I would be so happy to see if Paul would leave the house um, because he's played such a great game and would get cut off right uh, during a double eviction. Um, but obviously that probably won't happen, but fingers crossed, going into a double eviction though is probably going to be the same thing. The Battle of the Showman says with Paul and Kevin probably staying in the middle of the, um, of the fighting pit while everybody else fights around trying to get power, um, to try to get, 
uh, the two people evicted. Obviously, we haven't heard anything about Vito yet, um, with Matt and Alex being put up on the block. Uh, fingers crossed on what happens. This is going to be an interesting week. Thank hey, thank you so much for get watching, or at least getting to this point. If you like this video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe for more Big Brother content like this. Uh, if you want to see my double eviction um, and or Mark's eviction rant, uh, feel free to check it out here or here or um, here or here, whichever way I decide to put it and whichever way it decides to turn out. Um, also, too, thank you so much for watching. And if you like my shirt, feel free to give a thumbs up or a comment down below um, to support the shirt, because why not? And if you like me, feel free to also give a thumbs up um, or a comment down below on, to see how I improve, uh, to see how I can improve or uh, what you like about it, what you don't like about it. Thank you so much, though, for watching. Um, and you have a great day. Um, so, yeah.